first time you ever had me fill in for you, and uh, I didn't take offering. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I had to call him afterwards. I'm like, uh, yeah, I forgot to take an offering. So, because uh, he was the first person that ever actually had me r like run a whole service. Like everybody before, like, you know, had somebody there that was doing everything for me. I was just getting up and preaching. He's like, no, you got it. And I'm like, okay. And then I do it. And that, no offering. Uh, but we're going to be in L Lamentations chapter three today. I'll give you a little bit of an update, and then we'll, then we'll go there. Uh, but, yeah, actually, him talking about uh, the, the Indian reservation nearby, I actually had a kid down in uh, Webster, New York, ask me if there were any Indians in India. And he was talking about, you know, our Indians. <laughs> and I'm like, well... Actually, there are Indians in India, but they're the real Indians, not the ones that somebody got lost and called them the wrong thing, you know? <laughs> but, but he didn't understand that, you know, the, the whole naming, you know, was, was off, and I found that so amusing that he asked me if there were Indians in India. But, uh, yeah, things are going, and we're being blessed there. I'm not going to say it's never stressful, that there's never any problems, but it, it, it's being blessed. My my wife needs your prayers. She's been very stressed since I've been gone, because normally I handle all the business stuff. And so, you know, now I'm here, so she has to handle all the business stuff. So she was going out to the village and, and teaching the children, and then riding her motorcycle back into town to, to meet with the lawyer, and then going back. <laughs> so she was just, she, she was having a hard time. And our, our son, uh, Gal there, he was also having to take on a lot of my responsibilities, and he's never had all that responsibility, so he started getting headaches and everything else. So it was a good learning experience for him. You know, yeah, this is what Dad always puts up with. Uh, so, you know, but they're doing good. Things are, go things are going. Carrie will be here in uh, early May. She'll land in, down at JFK on May 4th. I'll go pick her up, and we'll spend a couple weeks together in the States and head right back to India because by then everything should be cleared up and uh, yeah it's just been, it's a blessing over there we'll we'll have by the uh, next winter if anybody's interested uh, most of you probably I know are not but if anybody's interested next winter we're going to be building uh, a building on the the uh, compound that we have in Nomley where the Burmese church is going to be and the outreach into Burma and uh I, I'm looking for Americans especially to come in and help build it. Uh, yeah, we'll do some preaching, we'll do some teaching, but one thing that's missing is they think that white people are too special to do work, right? Because they, they see us as like the religious caste. And so they see their own pastors the same way. So they don't think ministry men should be doing work. So I want to get some guys over there. My, my, pa uh, my pastor down at uh, Seneca... Bible Baptist, he's going to come out and, and, and he's, you know, in his 70s, but he's a good worker. So they'll get to see a man who's a pastor who's also out there helping dig dig holes and swinging a hammer, you know, and, and because they, they get this impression they want to apply their cultural caste system to the church. And that's why the church isn't being blessed. And so they'll get to see that. So if anybody's interested in that and knows that Maybe you don't want to go out and live in a remote village for any period of time. Carrie's going to be doing stuff back in, in Imphal itself with some of the ladies. We're hoping some ladies will come, and they'll, they'll get to spend time doing some children's ministry and stuff like that in, in town. Because uh, I don't, most American women, I don't think, are going to be able to uh, handle the village of Nobley. They may not want to eat bugs or dog or, you know... <laughs> <laughs> sleep on a bamboo bed or you know those those wonderful things we do in the village so there will be that opportunity also but the main thing is is we want people to see what's actually going on and uh, because I think it, for one thing for some people it helps build trust you know I know me and pastor I, I don't have that problem but but I, but I think you know there's certain people that you know don't know me as well it'd be good for just come out and see and you know, and, and, and do some of the work also, and, and maybe some young people will come and realize that the Lord can use them for something also. You know, so, so be praying for that. Uh, we also have a, uh, our son, uh, Simon Chakma, uh, just moved to the state of Missouri and is starting a church there. 
and uh, hopefully in the next uh, year we'll start working on building a, a, a place there for him to also teach uh, his fellow Chakma that can then go back into Bangladesh because they're on both sides of the, the border and we can continue to get a, a work going in Bangladesh where our other son uh, Robin Chakma is who is uh, he uh, has he does a great ministry there working mainly amongst the Muslims not his own people anymore because his own people put a price on his head mm. so uh he, he can't really go. He, he sneaks every once in a while into the Chittagong Hills region, but he, he can't go there and stay for any amount of time because it's a, a threat of his life. And so be praying for that. And, uh, of course, also be praying for Kashmir. I was supposed to be in Jammu, the lower section of Kashmir, the Jammu-Kashmir state, uh, this month to uh, be teaching some pastors. And then I go back in the, the spring summertime frame when the snow melts and I, I go up and spend time alongside the road with the Gujar nomads. Uh, my focus there is uh, may primarily on the Muslim people and mainly those, those nomads because the people that are more willing to accept Christ, uh, and I won't go into this too far because I have a whole sermon on it that you've already heard, but, but are those people out in amongst the highway and hedges, right? The, the focus is supposed to be on the downtrodden, those that nobody else wants. And what you'll find is in almost every society, if you have gypsies, nomads, people like that, nobody wants them. You know, I, I, we stopped and we were talking to uh, uh, this haji, and, and uh, I stopped to talk to him, and he was like, he was expressing to me through my interpreter, of course, how wonderful it was because nobody's ever interested in us. Nobody cares about us. And that's their mindset, because they're these worthless nomads. They love their life. They love what they're doing. I was talking to this man. He was probably around the similar age to, to Pastor Art, and he's walking up into the mountains with his water buffalo still. And he's like, "You know, you need to come visit me in, in my in my com, you know, basically compound. Like he owns a whole section of town down in Punjab. But he loves just walking up into the mountains with his." with his water buffaloes. But while he's doing it, the, the, the local people are mistreating them, they're speaking ill of them, and nobody's giving them any, nobody ever shows them any compassion. So me and Pastor Singh and my interpreter Raja stopped and we're talking with them. Uh, Pastor Singh's handing out tracts and, and talking to, to his, to his uh, children and grandchildren, and I'm just enjoying time talking to this Haji showing him that I care about his people, that I care about him. So, so in doing that, uh, then it's okay that Pastor Singh's doing what he's doing. You see, because people know you love them, it makes a difference. And, and so, and and that doesn't really <laughs> it's nothing to do with the message today. But but the Lord was just really putting that on my heart. You know, to, to express, you know, that, that's what I'm doing there with those Muslim people. And it wasn't easy for me. Uh, I've seen some horrible things done by people of that religion. And, and there was a, a lot of bitterness in me for a long time. And so to, to overcome that and be able to just show them love. And so I'm, I'm hoping to actually go and visit him as soon as I get back. And I, and I want to spend more time specifically with him and his people. We, we have many connections, many, uh, his grand, uh, grandson is playing on the same football team down in Goa as uh, a friend of mine's cousin. So we have, we have that together. And so God is opening up a possibility to really get in there amongst those people, so be praying for that. But what we're going to be talking about today is hope. Uh, so often, uh, we, it seems like we're losing our hope. You know, you're you're on the you're on the mission field, no matter where you're at. And if you, and if you lose that focus on on the hope that we're supposed to have, you're not going to be able to do it. You got to have hope, and and so to have hope, we have to realize what it is. So I, I just want to speak to you a little bit about that today, and and we'll we'll start by reading. Uh, Lamentations chapter 3, verse 21 through 24, and I'll pray and get started. Lamentations 
chapter 3, verse 21 through 24, reads, This I recall to my mind, therefore have I hope. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, because his compassion fell not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we just thank you for your hope. We thank you for sending Jesus Christ so that we can have hope. Lord, we thank you for providing our Savior. Lord, we ask that you would help us to concentrate on the word this morning, that you would help us to just be fully capable of receiving what you have for each and every one of us. Lord, I pray that you would help me to step out of your way and allow you to work in this place. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And uh, you see, starting out here, it's reminding us our hope is in the Lord. You know, uh, as I was leaving for India, a bunch of mess happened. And, and I'm very thankful that Pastor Kirk stuck by, stuck by me and helped me get through that. But I can't have hope in him. He's going to fail me. You know, uh, he, he stepped into the gap in place of a man who failed me. That I love dearly. But man is going to fail you. I, I failed my children at times. And, and I would probably continue to do so. Right? Because I'm a failure. But when I operate in the spirit of God, right? When I can show Christ, I, 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 I can have that hope. But the hope can only come from the Lord. We can't have any hope without Him. So where do you, you know where are we finding our hope? Do we even understand what hope is? So often we hear this this word just abused. Hope hope in the world sense doesn't 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 mean what it means in the Bible. Let's look at uh, Psalms uh, forty two real quick. Turn back to Psalms 42. Psalms 42, starting in verse 1, says, As the heart panteth after the water brook, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. My soul thirsteth for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my meat day and night, while they continually say unto me, Where is thy God? When I remember these things, I pour out my soul in me, for I, I had gone with the multitude. I went with them to the house of God with the voice of joy and praise with the multitude that kept holy day. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. O my God, my soul hath is cast down with me. Therefore will I remember thee from the land of Jordan oh, sorry, and of the Hermonites and from the hill of Mizar. Deep calleth unto deep at the noise of thy water spouts. All thy waves and all thy billows are gone over me. Yet the Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime. And in the night his song shall be with me and my prayer unto the God of my life. I will say unto God my rock, what hast thou forgotten me? Why go I mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? As with a sword in my bone, my enemies reproach me. While they say daily unto me, Where is thy God? Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted with me? Hope thou in God. For I shall yet praise him who is the, heal, who is the healeth of my continence and, of, and my God. You see, no matter our circumstances... No matter what's coming against us, we should be looking unto God for our hope. When we get distracted from God, we lose our hope. No matter what, God will, wreck you, wreck, will rescue us in loving kindness. In Romans 5.8 it says, But God commandeth his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. See, he didn't die for the person that's standing here today. He died for me in, in all of my my sin. He died for all of the for the guy that was doing everything wrong, was fighting against him constantly. That's who he died for. 
So no matter our circumstances, if you're saved, you should have hope. Not in man, but in God. So often, we let our worldly circumstances decide our hope. You know, uh, as I, I, I don't know why this keeps entering my mind, but you know, you you, you love you lose a loved one, and, and and you become depressed. You let it affect your hope. You, you let that you know if the loved one's saved, especially it should never affect us in that way. They're 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 just going to be in a better place. They're they're, they're with the Lord. You know, so often in our society, we speak of those things in just an ungodly way. Not everyone's with the Lord. But we have hope. Yeah, there's a reason, you know, when certain people die, we should be sad. Because unfortunately, not everybody is going to glory. Unfortunately, not everyone is saved. Not everyone has that hope. But we do, and why aren't we showing it? Why are we not letting people know our hope is in the Lord? Amen. How do we receive this hope and use it? Let, let's look up, continue in our primary text back in Lamentations, verse 25 and 26. There it says, The Lord is good unto them that wait for him, to the soul that seeketh in him. It is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. Amen. That is so hard. It sounds so simple. Yeah. But man, I want to do something. You know, that was my biggest problem when I first got to India. Well, why isn't this happening? You know, I, you know, I was going to show up and this was going to happen. And God's like, well, wait a minute. Wait on me. Why are you trying to do something on your own? We, we, we want to do something for God. I can't do anything for God. The spirit that's in me can but when I try to do it myself, I fail every time. We, we have to concentrate on that hope, and the hope comes by waiting, and that's the hardest thing for especially a man to do. I can't speak for women, because I'm not one, but I, I'm, I'm sure it's, it, it's pretty much the same. You know, that waiting is the hardest thing. Just sitting there patiently saying, God, show me. You know, and as children of God, we should be waiting on Him for all things. You know, so often we think of waiting as laziness. And that's not what I'm saying, right? I'm not saying, you know, oh, I'm waiting on the Lord. Why don't you have a job yet? I'm waiting on the Lord. No, that's, <laughs> that, that, that's not waiting on the Lord. That's just being lazy, Right? Well, you're, you're busy while you're waiting. You're waiting for the Lord to show the next step, but you're still working. You know, all, all those years uh, uh, that I visited Pastor up here, and I, and I came up here and went door knocking and different things, you know, he was waiting on the Lord. And it's, and it's hard. Because you just want to see people get saved. You just want to see the church full. You just want to see people loving on God. So while you're waiting, you keep doing what the Lord would have you do. And, and, and this doesn't only apply to ministry, it applies to our lives. You know, uh, I wish I would have understood this better when I was raising my children. Because at times I was trying to force it. And you can't force it. You know, kids make some stupid decisions. And then I remember when I was 19. Oh, yeah. I made stupid decisions, too. And, you know, I had, a, I had a mom that was waiting for me to make the right decisions. I had, I had two older sisters who were praying for me and waiting on the Lord to operate in my life. They weren't calling up their little brother every day and beating me up. They were waiting. You know, and, and that's how we receive the, the hope. Uh, Psalms... 27 verse 14 says, Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Psalms 37, 34 says, Wait on the Lord and keep his way, and he shall exalt thee to inherit the land 
when the wicked are cut off, thou shalt see it. Proverbs 20, verse 22 says, Say not thou, I will recompense evil, but wait on the Lord, and he shall save thee. You know, when uh, I was talking to my son that moved to Missouri, I was expressing this to him, you know, that how God had used his time in Siliguri going to a Nepali church that wasn't always easy for him to teach him to wait on the Lord. Take those lessons. Use them. Remember, when somebody comes against you with evil, it's not your job. Your job is to wait on the Lord. And that's hard for me. When, when I, especially if I see somebody wronging a friend, I just want to punch him in the mouth. I, I'm just being honest with you. My flesh comes out. There, there are people in the ministry that at times I have wanted to cause physical harm because they harmed a friend. You can hurt me. That's fine. I can take it. But, but you hurt my friends. You hurt my kids. You hurt my wife. I want, I want to do something. But God say, no, put that on me. Wait on me. Let me handle those problems. You just keep being faithful. And that's hard. You know, the, the simplest things in the Bible are the hardest things. Salvation. Oh, it's so simple. But man, is it hard. Waiting on the Lord. Oh, that's simple. But man, is it hard. To, to truly live it, to truly do it, is hard because evil is going to come people are going to come against you circumstances are going to come against you and your job is to wait have patience and as it continues on here and maybe this is something that we can pass on to other people because I know most of us in the room aren't that young but, there, but there's a key thing here that, that I wish somebody would have taught me it long ago so maybe it's something that someone here needs to pass on or we do have one younger person here but but here starting in uh, verse 27 through uh, 30 it says it is good for a man that he beareth the yoke in his youth he sitteth alone and keepeth silence because he hath borne it upon him he putteth his mouth in the dust if so be there may be hope he giveth his cheek to him that smiteth him he he is filled full with reproach. You see, when, when you're young, if you, if you go through these things, God gives you trials. God, God puts you through some stuff, and it strengthens you, and it's so much easier to endure when you're young. You know, I started doing this work for the Lord when I was a little bit older, the most start. And it's hard, because you have a lot of bad habits. You've got a lot of things. That, that you've got a lot of baggage. You know, I was talking to my son-in-law's, both of them recently about this. It's, it's good that you're enduring these things with your wives when you're young. It's good It's good that my grandchildren aren't going to remember it. Because when you get older you know, you have older kids, and the hurt stays. I have a daughter that was hurt a lot in India, and she struggles. So if you can do it when you're young, it's so much better. Because then your kids grow up in it, you know, the... They, they, they get the strength that they need. I, I came to the to the I came to salvation early enough, but I came to the truth too late. I don't know if you understand that, if you get that. Man, I wish I would have known the truth earlier. I wish I would have known this book earlier. You know. I love that my children are saved, but I could have done so much more for them. If I've been living in this hope, if I've been waiting, if, I, if I've been strengthening through the suffering when they were younger. Because those of us that are, that are here and doing ministry and we're a little bit older, we can tell you it, it, it's hard 
to suffer. It, it's, it's easier to move on when you're young. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24 through 27, it says, Know you not that they which run in a race run all but one receiveth the prize? So run that ye may obtain. And every man that ser- striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air, but I keep under my, my under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be cast away. See here, this is talking about and and giving you the examples of people. If you're doing something physical, right? I'm hey, sorry, I gotta grab my put my tissue in my pocket. Uh. If, if you're doing something carnal, right? Uh, for for years, you know, in 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 high school, I did wrestling, I did taekwondo, I've done Thai kickboxing, right? You're you're struggling, you're learning how to fight, and you're you're just consistently striving against people, right? You, you're pushing yourself, and he, and he's talking about those physical things, right? And and how if you're willing, if you're doing that, you need to be doing it also spiritually. How much more is there to profit spiritually? How much more is it is it better for you to strive to run your race, to bring your body in, under subjection, so that you can earn the, those spiritual get those spiritual rewards? You know, uh, we it's uh, once again another thing that 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 the concept sounds so easy, but it's so hard. You would think it would be easier, right, to train yourself up spiritually. Man, it's so much easier to go to the gym. It is. You know, no problem to go to the gym. But my body some days doesn't want me to open my Bible. Right? I mean, I I guess I'm I'm probably the only one struggling with that sometimes, right? I'm the only one that... That, that some days just has to make myself do it. No. Right? We, you know, we, if we're willing to suffer for those physical things, why, why are we not willing to suffer spiritually? You know, to, to endure spiritually. You know, I, I understand that it's hard sometimes. Maybe there's a family member that you're, you've been putting off witnessing to because you know there's a chance when you, if you do it again that you won't be able to see that family member anymore for a while. I went through that. I had nieces and nephews that weren't allowed to see their uncle because my nephew got saved. And his mom was a Mormon. And it was hard. It, it, you know, I suffered. But, but isn't it worth it? Amen. If just one person gets saved, isn't it worth it? Amen. You know, we, we always think of you know, the suffering is like people like me that are overseas sleeping on the ground and riding around on a bike. No, the spiritual suffering is so much harder. You know, thinking of the people dying and going to hell that you can't reach is so much harder. Mm-hmm. The unsafe family members, that's so much harder. I don't, I don't think I could handle living close by my family. Because every time I see them, it just reminds me, man, they're dying and going to hell. And they won't listen to me. You know, so I just have to pray that somebody can reach them and, and still put it out every time that I'm there, right? Every time, every time I'm around my family, I find the nearest Bible-believing church that I can, and I schedule myself to be in there, or I at least let the pastor know, hey, I'm coming, I'm trying to bring some family. Because you want them to get saved, but sometimes we got to suffer we got to struggle. Let's go on back in the primary text in verse 31 through 36. It says there, For the Lord will not cast off forever. But though he cause grief, yet will he have compassion according to the multitude of his mercies. I want to stop there for a minute. It's not in my notes, but, but me and Pastor have been talking about this over the past couple of days, and Aren't you glad 
that we rely on God's mercies. Man. Man, you wouldn't want me. Like, if you were relying on my mercy, man, you're in trouble. God is so merciful. But sometimes, you know, and, and, and we got to remind ourselves of that because that's, that's, that's our example. So, so it's a bad thing that I don't have that mercy, but I have to admit I don't. <coughs> You know, and that's often what's missing is, you know, is, is our mercy. But, but isn't it great that we get to rely on his mercies? Verse 33, for he, he doth not afflict willingly nor grieve the children of men to crush under his feet all the prisoners of the earth, to turn aside the right of man before the face of the Most High, to subvert a man in his cause the Lord approveth not. You see, the Lord has a purpose for the suffering. He's not trying to crush you. He's not trying to destroy you. If he was, you'd be destroyed. He just wants you to put it on him. He just wants you to, to be able to endure in him. God will not allow you to fall or fail if you're faithfully suffering and waiting in, in him. There is always a reward. There is always glory to be given to God. Now, to man, it may look like failure. I'm not talking about what's on the outside, right? Because there's churches that run 1,500 that are failures. There's ministries that, that claim, you know, oh, I went to India and 10,000 people got saved, but that ministry is a failure. I'm not talking about looking at it from man's point of view. There is no failure if you're staying and waiting and hoping in the Lord. Some of the greatest men of the Bible had no apparent success when they were alive. Uh, your pastor was telling me he's been in the book of Jeremiah lately. Perfect example. And, and, and that, that's, the, that's, the, that's you know, one of the examples of what a preacher is. You know? And, and so we, we, we start applying these false things to it, and we allow ourselves, our hope, to be taken away. If you're suffering, there's glory in that. You can look to God and say, glory be to God. I'm not saying it's easy. Right? We, it requires us to, to feed the Spirit, to stay in the Spirit, and, and in, endure and struggle. Matthew chapter 19, verse 27 through 29 says, Then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all and followed thee. What shall we have therefore? And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit on the throne of his glory, you also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And every one that have forsaken houses, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my name's sake shall receive a hundredfold, and shall inherit everlasting life. You see, no matter what sacrifices are made in your life, God is always going to reward you. That doesn't mean that I got a Mercedes parked up at Kurt's house. Right? It's not, it's not, the things of this world aren't that important. This is just a moment in time. The only thing that's going on that's important here is people getting saved. That's the importance But you cannot outgive God in, in ministry and life. Anything you do for him, he, he's going to be faithful to you. So, so why are we letting our hope be destroyed? Why are we giving up our hope? So anything we endure is worth it. Man, it's so hard when you're in it, though, right? Right? But it is. The Bible says it, so it's true. It's worth it. The re he's going to reward you. Let's stop concentrating on the physical world and 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 the sufferings that we've been through and 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 the wrongs we've been done, and just move on in our hope. Even if moving on means sitting and waiting. Lord, what do you want me to do? You know, sometimes you got to pray for a couple years before God tells you. Just be faithful. 
but he wants you to do something. He doesn't want you to just come here every Sunday and sit down. That's not what waiting is. You, you, we all should be doing something for the Lord. We should be looking to Him for our hope. Waiting on Him and strengthening ourselves in our suffering. No matter our age. Yes, it's better if it comes in your youth. But no matter our age, if we're suffering, He's strengthening us. He has something more for you. Just give Him the glory and look to Him in hope. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we just thank you for your word. We thank you for giving us your hope. Lord, if there's anyone here today that doesn't have that hope, I pray that they would, they would look to you in hope and salvation, Lord. Salvation can only come from you. I pray that they would understand that, they, that you came as their Savior. You died for them. You died for the sinner, not for the saved. Through your, through your death, we yes, we, we become saved. But you gave us that gift, and you showed us mercy, and you continue to show us mercy every day. Lord, I pray that we would, those of us here that are saved, would learn to wait on you and just look to you for, as our hope. Not look to man, not look to our money. Not look to the things of this world, but just look to you for our hope and wait patiently as you strengthen us through our trials and tribulations and sufferings in this world. Lord, let us give you glory in all things and just look to you in hope. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. <clears throat>
and uh, and and I lived a good life. You know, I, I mean, I wasn't worried about starving in my lifetime. I had a mother and a father, and, and and I had a good life. I'm not worried about all these things. And that's like for Stephen. That's how he thinks. And he reproved me at my house one day. He said, "I've loved a good life." I was supposed to die when I was a little kid. And he says, and here I am today. And I'm sitting there like, I'm supposed to be the preacher. And he was reproving me. And uh, the, best, the best thing is to rejoice in what you had, whether it's three days, whether it's two days, whether the joy you had was this. And uh, we said, tend to look at the, instead of the silver lining, we like to look at that brass lining that comes through. And silver's lore of a redemption. It's more like, thank you, Lord, for what you've given me. Thank you for being merciful to me. Uh, thank you for these things. And, and, and I, I, uh, I look at that a lot more right now. So why don't we pray for those people and also make sure you're praying for Mary. Three times a week she goes to uh, a dialysis, right, Mary? And, and let me give it to you this way. Just say that she there's a holiday that ends on a Tuesday or her regular day. She's going to do two days in a row. It's so uncomforting, but you know what? She's just going, she's going through it. And, uh, God's bringing me. Amen. And that's the thing. She's been putting God in the midst of it. And uh, she, she goes in there and, you know, and she's, she's got... She's got nothing. She's got, she's got, like, she ain't going out to get the best job, and she ain't going out to make money anymore. You know what she's doing? She's got one thing to hang on, God and his word, and that's it. Amen. And that's the biggest trial that she's ever had in her life. Amen. You know? So we got, like I said, when there's times like this, we got to pray for each other. We kind of forget during the week. And there's three people right there. Michelle and Stephen, her son, Andy and Denise, she's going through it too, and, and Larry and Mary, because they're going through it. If there's anybody else, we need to get involved in prayer with them. Doesn't mean you have to come here and pray or anything like that. You got a home. You got a. You got anywhere you walk. You got a car when you drive. There's nothing you can pray anytime, anywhere, anything. And we have a tendency to look at. Uh, when you're reading your Bible, you don't realize you're in communication with God. You're actually praying at that time. People don't even realize that. So stay in communication with God. And make sure you're lifting up other people and, and we, they need help. You know, and if you have a problem, like sometimes, you know, people get lonely. You know, uh, when you're alone, it's hard to live by yourself. It is. And they need prayer too. Amen. Amen. All right, so why don't we pray for... Larry, why don't you pray first? Okay, and then... Uh, uh, Brother Art, would you pray too? Thank you. Uh, go ahead, Larry. Our Father God in heaven, we just come to you, Lord, and, and just look to you, Lord, for all of our hope. And we just uh, pray for now, you know, for Stephen, for him, Lord, for his life that he's led. Lord, we just bring him through this time. And you shall for him for her, Lord, for the hardship it is for her, Lord, to have her son, Lord, in this condition, Lord. Pray for her, Lord, and lift up her spirits, Lord. And pray for Andy, Lord. It's a hard time for him, Lord, and you just coming back, like the pastor says, you know, and now he's uh, got all these problems, Lord. But just give him the strength, Lord, and the hope, Lord. Uh, and just hold on to him, Lord. Put your arms around him. And I pray for my wife, Lord, for her times, Lord. Difficult sometimes, Lord. She's got strength, though, Lord. She's got a good mindset. She loves you, God. I pray for her every day like that. I thank you for that, Lord. I pray for uh, anyone else, Lord, that's alone, Lord, that needs help. Lord, and lift them up, Lord. I just pray, Lord, you just touch their hearts, Lord, and draw them to you, Lord. Hold on. I just love you, God, and I just thank you for hearing me, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Our Holy Father, once again, very thankful. You are very thankful. Calvary is very thankful for this church and this 
people who you have uh, uh, been a part of it and uh, love they have for you and the love they have for each other and for the neighbor. Lord, when the storms of life come, they're not easy to handle many times. And as much as we put our hope and our faith in you, uh, even King Jehoshaphat, the Bible says, God became fear. And, and, and human nature takes over. And too many times you see you see the worst in the midst of the storm. And many times you just don't see you there. And seeing in Mark 4 in the midst of that storm, and the disciples ran and found Jesus sleeping at the hind part of the boat. And they cried out and said, Don't you even care we perish? And, and, and uh, the Lord rebuked them. And, and it's tough sometimes to rebuke. And yet our faith and trust is, 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 is supposed to be in you. And, and think in us. As we're saved people, the best part about being saved is when we're, we're in a win-win situation. Either the healing takes place here on earth, or God will go and get the glory for you and you. But as a Christian, we are in a win-win situation. The Lord, in the midst of that storm, this is where, uh, most of all, we just need to put our faith and trust in you greater now than ever. The Lord, we pray for a healing and Their faith in the midst of it all, and I'm sure you sure could use a touch of uh, the master's hand upon their lives and encouragement and, and again to see some hope and, and take place as, uh, as the preacher preached you this morning. God, uh, uh, we pray for this Andy. Whenever things seem to stop taking place, looking good, then come with the devil. He seems to want to work overtime and, and to bring us that point of where David was in Psalm 42, as Corey preacher preached this morning, that his hope was in you. And I love that. I think it's verse 5 when he brought out, you know, remember. And too many times we forget the last storm that the Lord allowed us to go through and he brought us through and the blessings that came out of it in the end. And he, and he said to, uh, to the psalmist writing that, that day, David, to remember where I was when you were in the midst of your lowest moments. Remember, your hope is in me. So God, today, we just pray that, that these that are going through this and this marriage, that, that their hope will always be in you and their faith will increase in the midst of, the, of the, some of the worst of the trials and tribulations. And Bryce and Toby that come here, her brother, 55 years old, had a massive stroke the other day. And, and uh, one whole right side is paralyzed and the whole one side all the way down. And, as many times as we shared the gospel with them, and it just wasn't wasn't important enough to listen to him, too busy, and, and just put it to the side and to the side where he didn't even care one way or the other. But in the storms of life, many times God gets our attention. We know Romans eight twenty eight. We know all things work together for good, and, and uh, to them, uh, to them that love God, to them who are the call according to His purpose, and. Uh, I always reverse that and saying God has a plan and a purpose for those that love him and good will come out of the bad. And Lord, in, in two and a half days later, Mr. Tracy gave his life to you and we're very thankful that in the midst of the storm and he took him to be bedridden that you got his attention. So Lord, today, it, it, there's hope and good in you and you promised good to come out of it. So Lord, whatever's going to take place in this Mary's life, in Ian's life, and in Steve's life, increase their faith more now than ever. And, and Lord, again, they all need to touch uh, uh, the Master's hand. And Lord, may they always look up. And uh, as an old saying, when things stop looking down, we need to look up. So today, Lord, just increase our faith that we can look up, knowing you have a plan. Today, it don't look good, but your promise good is going to come out of it. So God, again, a blessing upon all, a blessing upon this church, uh, the, the missionary Lord India, and Preacher and his wife, a blessing upon all. And for those that couldn't make it here this day, you're a good God, you're a great God. And I sure am thankful I'm saved because without being saved, having hope in you, what hope would we have? And so again, we thank you, thank you for your faith, for your faith, and our God and our Savior. And we ask for that in your precious name. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. I appreciate that. And well, let's be dismissed in peace. Thank you, Lord, for all you do. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right.